Hello everyone, this is your host Mike Ellis. Welcome to Oculi Rebus. We're here on the 13th floor. So full disclosure, I've had to redo this episode. I recorded it, well I thought I recorded it better yet. I didn't realize I didn't have the microphone set up to run in the background. Chalk it up to a rookie mistake. So this week we're actually going to do two uh, shorter episodes. Um, They don't tie together, but there will be something together in a way, I guess, very vaguely together. Um, But this episode is produced by John Solis and is a Yuckfo production. What's in a name? Uh, Last week, uh, this episode was not planned by no means. When I do show notes, it's usually a, a day or two before I record. I did these notes a couple of days ago just because something kind of, I wouldn't say bothered me, but agitated me a little. And uh, with that being said, there was never an intent for this to be the main episode for this week, and it will not be the main episode. This is just a little bonus feature for you guys, okay? So what's in a name? When was the last time you met somebody named Brutus? I don't mean Brutus Beefcakes either. It's probably been a while. The reason is, you know, you you can't trust a Brutus, right? I've met a lot of Caesars. Luckily, not a lot of Brutuses to stab him in the back. We as people take names very serious. At least I'd like to think we do. I don't think somebody just says, oh, I'm going to name my firstborn child Beth. Now, there's nothing wrong with the name Beth or Bethany. I'm just saying it's usually a little bit more thought out than just the first word that comes to your mind. Now, maybe, maybe not. I mean, look at Elon Musk. Now, with that being said, I 100% believe he put a ton of thought behind that name. You might disagree, but I think he did. But names are, they, they set life in motion. You know, um, you hear the name Ronald, you might think Ronald McDonald. You hear Jared, you might think a subway and then might think about a pedophile. Sorry to put that in your head. You know, there's there's these names that are synonymous with uh, individuals or, or ideas and stuff like that, right? Uh, if I tell you Albert, you might think of your buddy Albert. If I say Einstein, you think of one of the leading geniuses of modern time. You know, you hear the name Trump or Obama. I think, I think Trump's a little bit different though, right? Obama is now famous, right? So you think certain things, but Trump. You know, Trump had a different meaning before it was the name of the president. Hell, Trump had a different meaning before Donald Trump was Donald Trump. It's always been known as, oh, I got the card that'll Trump all, right? So these names and everything are are very interesting. There's a lot of connection to the past and to, to the present. And certain things mean certain things. You know... Case in point, I use the name Mike Ellis for the podcast. If you didn't know, it's not my real name. I mentioned it in the first episode, though. Or the or first trailer, I should say. But it's not. But that name means a lot to me. So I decided to run with it. So, you know, all I'm trying to say is I challenge you guys. Think about names. And I think you're going to come to the same conclusion that names have a very uh, deep meaning whether we initially think so or not. So all this talk about names. Now we're ready to dive in, right? The Cleveland Indians, the Washington Redskins, the Atlanta Braves, the Kansas City Chiefs, the San Diego Aztecs. Let's throw in the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans. Why not? If you've been hiding under a rock, the Cleveland Indians just changed their name. Washington Redskins changed their name a while back, and I think they're just the Washington team. Or I don't know. It's stupid. Um, I kind of get that one, though. And I say kind of because, well, you'll see. But I don't get the Cleveland Guardians. Makes me think about Disney. You know, what do names do, right? I don't think about a sports franchise. I don't even think about the Monstars. But they're the Guardians now. And I know it's, it's, again, right, names mean something, right? I think this name of the statues they have at the, uh, somewhere in the city, 
like a highway or bridge or the Guardians to Cleveland or something like that. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, guys. But um, the Cleveland Indians now are the uh, Cleveland Guardians. God, that's such a terrible name, I think, too. So Redskins, again, we can go back and forth. But the Kansas City Chiefs, there's been talks about that. San Diego Aztecs, if you're not familiar, look them up. Some names have been changed, some haven't. But the Cleveland Indians is the one that really stands out to me. Well, I mean, if the Atlanta Braves change, I'd stand out too. So we're so worried about these names bringing, uh, being racist or dishonorable or whatever the two cent word is we're using right now. That's not even two. It's one cent. It's it's all emotional um, diatribes at this point. We're just trying to make up for something. I, I don't know what, but we're trying trying our damnedest, right? So I mentioned the Dallas Cowboys, and I also mentioned the Houston Texans. Let's think about the Dallas Cowboys first. Cowboys killed Indians. So I guess we're just going to honor people that killed other people, right? Now, I know not all Cowboys killed Indians, but we played Cowboys and Indians as kids, didn't we? So kind of interesting that that's acceptable. Not only that, the Cowboys haven't had a great season in forever, so they're also bringing discredit to, <laughs> to the good Cowboys but by and large, I think history has shown that the term cowboy was typically um, tagged on somebody that was a, a criminal or vagrant or whatever the case is. So maybe the cowboys should change their name. Not I don't not because I think that it, it hurts my feelings that they're named after criminals, but because they're giving criminals a bad name at this point. <laughs> Just kidding. I am a I am a Cowboys fan. Now the Houston Texans though, let's talk about that. The Houston Texans are named after the people of Texas, the Texans, right? When can Texans be upset? I mean, why would you name your team after a group of people, right? It's so racist, so bigoted. They're probably not going to have a good season for a couple years, so we're definitely on the back end of, uh, or the front end of being able to say they're disparaging an entire group of people. (laughs) See how stupid it sounds when you make it modern, I guess? I don't know. So, let's look at these names, right? Again, Washington Redskins, I get it, whatever. But then I don't. Here's why. A few generations ago, a few decades ago, however long ago, when um, the people who were in the position to make the decision of naming these franchises, I know some of them weren't even quote-unquote franchises, it's more of a modern sports thing, right? But before we, we got to that, these people sat somewhere and they decided, what are we going to name our our sports team? And I'm pretty sure they didn't think, well, you know what? I want to bring dishonor to an entire group of people by honoring the name, the Indians, the Chiefs. I just, I don't see that. What do you think the players think? Now, and let me rephrase the question. Prior to this nonsense, because I think that's what a lot of this is, do you think the players went out there and said, man, you know, this chief that's on my helmet, this Indian that's on my helmet, I just, I want to bring discredit to the history of not just my franchise, but an entire group of people by playing as bad as possible. Um, I can't think of that being a thing. Now, maybe if the mob got involved, but that's a whole different thing, right? I think that a player goes out there with the best intentions to do the best possible damn job they could to bring honor and credit to the logo, to the name, to the team, to the franchise, to the city, to the history. So this is kind of where my line in the sand is. Again, Redskins, I could... I get it. it it's, uh, it's an offensive um, use of words to put together to describe an entire group of people. Sure. But were the Indians really upset? Were the Native Americans really upset? I got to differentiate because they were named after the Native Americans. They weren't named after the Indians from India who the Native Americans are actually accidentally named after because Columbus was fucking lost in 1490. Who gives a fuck? So, 
is was that something that I didn't read? Like, were the Indians from India upset because they felt like they were being not represented right, and there was confusion? I I doubt it. I just don't know. I'm not privy to this information. But why stop? Why stop there? Why stop with the Texans? Why stop with the Cowboys? Let's go with the Dolphins. Poor bastard fish. That team sucks. They never win. They're they're destroying a whole like species I know they're not fish I'm sorry Ace Ventura I guess I probably made I brought more discredit <laughs> to the the wonderful dolphin than, <laughs> than the, the sports franchise did we're just stuck on being so offended I think we're setting a dangerous precedent any name can be attacked off the idea of an idea right um, I think that like, the only protected one really is like Hitler, right? Like, they killed that name off as quick as they could. And again, Brutus is not a popular name. It's also an ugly name. No offense, Brutus, if you're listening, but, but come on, buddy. So there's so much arguing about what's right and what's wrong when we fail to see that these teams are just trying to, to win games. And hopefully bring honor to the current status of the team, their community. I don't think a uh, a player from the Cleveland Indians ever went out and started trying to burn down a, a resi, a reservation. I just I don't think that's happened. But yet somehow it's racist, right? I think racist is just a one cent word that we keep throwing around right now. We attach these emotional diatropes to it to make it sell. See what happens. I think it's uh I think it's problematic. I think it's a I don't want to say it's a dangerous path, because it's really not a dangerous path, but it kind of is. We're leading with emotion instead of thought and knowledge. And we're we're now telling people that you don't deserve this name. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a guy here with a AirPod in my ear. So, the military aims their attack helicopters after Indian tribes, off of war tribes, war raging tribes. There's been calls to change it. But I'm sorry, how badass would it be to have a helicopter? named the Mike Atlas Express. And instead of dropping truth bombs, we're dropping some armor-piercing rounds or maybe a tactical nuclear warhead or something. <laughs> I almost did my own um, Tim the Toolman Taylor grunt there. <laughs> I just... I just don't see how people... Like these Indian tribes, you know? How upset are they? that they're being honored in, in that context. Yes, I get it. The American government has fucked them over many times. But is this what that's about? Because I don't think so. I really don't. As the populations dwindle and the bloodlines get um, mixed, which there's nothing wrong with that. What's left? The Apache helicopter's left. The Atlanta Braves are left. The Cleveland Indians are not. Maybe they weren't specific enough. I don't know. So I tried to do a little perusing for a good quote that incorporated the idea or the concept of names. I really couldn't find one that stuck out. So I put some pen to paper. All right. This is uh, right here on my show notes. It says, insert name quote here. And then I put my own parentheses. Here's a Mike Ellis original. A name is bestowed upon everyone. Much thought is given. People should try to bring honor to the name they are given. Mike Ellis. They really should. Again, I don't think the Chicago Bulls went out there and said, you know what? I just, I I think we don't treat Bulls good enough, so I'm not going to go out there and do good today. Now they played their asses off. Oh, I'm just waiting for... Oh, you know what? It'd be nice to the Patriots. 
Because, you know, right now with our political system we have here in America, the left and the right are trying to figure out what a patriot is. And somewhere in the middle is the average American. But on both extremes, you're looking at terrorists. It's kind of what you're looking at. So I guess we should 86 them too, right? Now, anybody who's listened to this podcast for more than five minutes probably knows I have an affinity for the military. Including the Coast Guard, I guess. And the Space Force. And the Reservists. And the Coast Guard. And the, did I say them? Anyways, they're all great. There's something about their uniform, though, right? It says whatever branch they are on the, uh, on the one side. And that's kind of like the uh, this is us thing, right? And uh, it's right above the heart. You know, it says, you know, U.S. Army, for example, right above the heart. Because that's where your heart's at. They wear a flag um, during time of war, which we've been at a time of war. I wonder if they're going to make them take that off soon since that's not a thing anymore, I guess. The flag's um, always flying. It's never in retreat. And they wear their unit insignia, their little unit patch, their awards, their declarations. But they have a name tape. I don't know if you haven't noticed this or not, but it's of their last name. First names are lame. Last names, though, that's your bloodline. So when you're in the suck, you're in the shit, and you're in the trenches, you look down at your uniform, you see your last name. You're not just there for the other side that says U.S. Army. You're not there for the flag that's on your shoulder, the old red, white, and blue with the 50 stars. You're also there for your family to bring honor to them. It'd be a disservice, it'd be disingenuous if you didn't put your best foot forward when your name was on the line. What bothers me right now is, now I, I couldn't find a word to describe this, but what we're looking at right now is um, essentially... What's the what? What is the name? Gentrification. This is like just a different gentrification almost. I know people are like that. That doesn't even make sense right now. But I couldn't find another word. It's just gentrification over names. We're just trying to edit things. Just trying to fix the, fix the communities. Right. We got to mix it up. Get rid of the uh, the problems by incorporating different things. Gentrification. Gentrification came from Europe, I think in the 50s or something like that. And that's what we're doing to, uh, when it comes to like the names. We're just, we're editing them. We're, we're changing them. We're, we're mixing them just to, to make it better. And it doesn't make anything better, does it? I personally think right now what we're looking at, what we're, what's being sold to us is Diary of Hate. We got to hate something. Got to hate something. The news, the media, our friends, the politicians, our neighbors, everyone tells us what to hate. It's an easy emotion. It's easier to hate than it is to love. Just to look at when uh, racism was a real big problem in America. Easier to hate than it is to love. Because love takes time. Love takes communication. takes effort. Hate doesn't. Matter of fact, in the future, I'm going to do an episode on how the Beatles are a pro-war band. <laughs> it, just a little bit, though. So the names that we've been given and the names that we give to the things around us, I don't think we ever do so with uh, malintent. Like I said, I don't think... It would have been different if it was the, the Cleveland um, raping Indians or something like that. Please don't take offense if you're Native American or Indian for that matter. I say it as a joke, but in all seriousness, if I had special effects, you'd hear the microphone drop right there because that's what it is. Sorry the name's not good enough. (laughs) So, the DMs are always open. Instagram, Twitter, um, we got a little YouTube thing going on. 
Don't know if these will be up on YouTube or not. But uh, Instagram, Twitter, all that stuff's getting and going, right? And then, of course, we have the actual podcast episode you're listening to right now. If you agree, disagree, feel free to get in those DMs. I love the conversation. We'll gladly continue this um, if you want to. So we're sitting under 500 listens right now. Hopefully at some point, it'll always say 500 listens, but we'll be looking at 50,000 or something like that. So uh, let's continue and help this uh, little podcast grow. Because without aggressive thinking, we're going to lack perspective. And I think perspective is the best drug in the world. So make sure you give us a like, a share. Give us a tweet. Retweet us. Go follow us on all these platforms and make sure all your friends and family are, are looking for us too. Again, if you, th- if you don't think they'll like us, let them judge us before you judge us. Hence why he's the name Mike Ellis. When typical fashion, I can go on and on, but it's time to move on. Mike Ellis, out.